The instructions in your book read, find the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. One ingredient needed to conquer the idea of the linear function is to find the slope of a line when given two points. At the end of this short video, you AI members will have a good understanding as to how to obtain the slope of a line by using the slope formula. Before we get started, we need to cover a few quick objectives. Also, if you haven't seen this video discussing the four types of lines, you may want to watch it after this video. Okay, the first thing we will agree on is that the slope of a line will be represented by the letter M. Most books represent it that way. Recall that the slope indicates the steepness of the line or the amount of incline. The larger the slope number, the greater the incline. For negative slopes, we can call it decline. Many refer to slope as rise over run. I put rise in quotes because sometimes we move vertically downward, in which case for a negative slope, retreat downward, then run right horizontally. Now, let's discuss the possibilities that arise when you obtain the slope. In particular, one, reducing the fraction, two, adjusting the negative signs, three, lack of a fraction. So using M as the slope, let's zip zap through all possible cases and a little bit more. Before I show you how to find the slope of a line given two points, I wanna first show you how to do some slope adjustments. The first adjustment I want to show you is this one right here. M, which is, stands for the slope, equals 4 eighths. Now 4 eighths is reducible. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that down to 1 half. It's beneficial to reduce the slope as quickly as possible. So we're going to rewrite that as M equals 1 half half. So now I want to talk to you real quickly about what that means geometrically. So the one on uh, the numerator, the top number, that's going to be a rise and the bottom number is going to be the run. So rise over run means that since the number on top is one, we're going to rise vertically one unit and then we're going to run two to the right horizontally. Rise one, run two. And here's our geometric representation. So you can see the slope and how steep it is relative to other slopes. The other thing that we want to notice is that our slope is positive. Now, if you recall from our other video, the four types of slopes, you'll recall the alien Geo as he's moving from left to right, moving upward. So as we read left to right, the slope goes upward for a positive slope. Okay, so the next slope that we want to look at is this one right here. M equals 3 over negative 4. Okay, so there's not, a, this one's not reducible like the first one, but we can make a sign adjustment. I like to have the negative sign in the top. That way, it's either rise over run right or retreat, which means go downward, run right. So I'm always going to run right because there's always going to be a positive number. Now, there's other ways to do this, and you're going to have to develop your own system, but it's good to have a system so you're more consistent in your head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sign adjustment here. Now, since a positive 
number divided by a negative is a negative, it's also true that a negative divided by a positive is also negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my adjustment still going to be equivalent, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the negative sign on top. I call that sign adjustment. You can give it any name that you want, but I'm just adjusting the signs. It's still a negative slope. So now we got to think about this one geometrically. What does that mean geometrically? Well, because I put the negative in the top, what that means for me is that I'm going to retreat vertically three units. And then notice I'm going downward. So I'm retreating downward vertically three units. And then I'm going to run again to the right four units. So we can take a look at this geometric representation up here. So you can actually see that we are retreating three from the first point, and then we're running four. And when we retreat three, meaning retreat going downward, and then run to the right four, we're gonna land on the second point. So that is the geometric representation. Now I wanna talk about the negative slope. Again, if you watch the video that we, um, we'll show it at the end of the, this video, so you can go right to it and look at it. But if you look at it, Geo, the alien, is moving left or right as we read a book, but he's moving down slope, okay? So a negative slope moves downward as we read left or right. So that's our uh, sign adjustment, and we talked about a negative slope. Now over here, this one's interesting because it has two things that we need to do. We have to take, a, take into account two different things. We have a sign adjustment, and it's also reducible because three-ninths will be reducible when we're done. Okay, so what we do is we look at this and we say, oh, a negative over a negative is a positive. I want to deal with all positives. Again, it should be mentioned that there are other ways of doing these, but I like to deal with the positive numbers and I like to always run to the right. So that's just a, a consistent thing that I do. When you get to more advanced levels, it won't really make any difference. You can geometrically think about it in any way, shape or form. But for right now, let's just stay consistent so we get a really good foundation. The negative over a negative, you've heard negative times negative is a positive, well also negative divided by negative is a positive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these negatives into positive numbers. So this is gonna become positive three and positive nine. So now it's really just three ninths. Okay, so what does three ninths mean? Well, first of all, we have to think about it. I could do my rise over run with this, but three ninths is a lot of movement when I know that I can reduce m to one third. Three goes into three, one, three goes into nine, three. So I'm gonna convert this thing here, this slope here to m equals one third. Okay, now we can look at that geometrically. We know it's positive, so we know it's a, a positive slope, and we already talked about that. But again, we're going to, since the top number is positive, we're going to move vertically upward. So we're going to rise one, and then we're going to run three to the right. So if I start at one point, and then I rise one and run three, I'm going to land back on that line. That'll be my, my second point. Uh, if we keep these numbers, you know, integers or whole numbers, they'll land right in the intersection of all the grids, which we'll talk about that on another video. So that's the M equals one third. So this was a sign adjustment and reducible. The next one I wanna look at real quickly is this one over here, which is make fractional. So what happens when you have a slope and you say, hey, I found my slope and it's M equals four, or they offer you the slope right away and it says M equals four. Well, simply just put it over one because four over one is still four. 
So now I know that I have a positive slope and I'm going to rise four and run one to the right. So rise upward four, run one to the right and I'll land back on my line. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that uh, from a video perspective of right now. So rise four, run one, and we land back on the line and we have our, we have two points that are on that line. Okay, so the next one that we can make fractional, I just wanted to show that it works with the negatives as well. So this is, you know, similar to this one, except for it's gonna be a negative slope. We take the negative two and put it over one. So what does that mean? That means that we're going to retreat downward. Negative means move down. Positive means move up, so we're gonna retreat downward two units, and we're going to run to the right one. Looking at our graph up here. Down, two, run, one. From middle school to middle age and beyond, all of us can learn the equation of a line, and it begins right here with the slope formula. Okay, let's roll. M represents the slope. M equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, where y sub 2 is the y component of the second point, in this case being 4, minus y sub 1, which is the y component of the first point, in this case being the 1, over x sub 2, which is the x component of the second point, being 8 here, minus x sub 1, which is the x component of the first point, that being 3 in this case. Now, in most of our books in algebra, we're given a problem that says something like this. Find the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. And then they give you a couple points. So here's how you attack the problem immediately. I'm going to use red for the first point and blue for the second point just to illustrate it a little bit better, but one color is, is just fine. So what I do is I label my first point. It's the first point, so it's going to have sub ones, and I'm going to label x. It's in alphabetical order, x then y. So I'm going to label x sub one, and then y sub 1. Again, alphabetical order, x then y, and it's the first point, so that's why the subscripts of 1 are used. Now with the blue pen, I'm going to label the second point. Again, it's alphabetical order, x then y, that's how the coordinate system works in two dimensions, and we'll label that one x sub 2, y sub 2. So now we have x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and we have our formula. So the next thing that we need to do is just pop these coordinates into our formula and we will get our slope. One thing I want to mention for uh, geometric purposes is some people like to put the points in order from left to right, meaning the x value over here is lower than the x value on the right hand side before they label their points. That way you're reading left to right all the time geometrically. But we'll talk about that in another video. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here now. We take our y sub 2, which is right here, and we're going to bring it down right here, and y sub 2 is 4. So I'm going to write 
4. Now y sub 1 is the red. Notice the minus sign is just from the formula, so I'm going to make that black. There's my minus sign. And then I go to the red, which is y sub 1, and I put in what y sub 1 is. It's, it's a 1. Okay, now we're going to divide it. And we're going to divide it by x sub 2. We probably should have circled this here, so we're going to do that right now, just to show where it's coming from. You probably knew it already, but... It's good to illustrate so it sticks in the mind a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to look at x sub 2. Well, x sub 2 is in blue, so I'm going to use the blue pen and circle it. It's in the bottom. So it's going to go down here, and x sub 2 is 8. So I'm going to put in the 8 down here. The minus sign is from the formula, so it's going to be the black pen. Notice the division sign was from the formula as well, that's why we use the black pen. And then we have the red, the red x sub 1. So here's our red x sub 1, and that guy is going to come down here, and x sub 1 is... 3. So again, all these points here are being placed in there. Again, y sub 2, y sub 2 goes in there. Minus y sub 1, y sub 1 goes in there. Over x sub 2, x sub 2 goes in there. Minus x sub 1, x sub 1 goes in there. Now we just do the math, which you probably learned how to do a long, long time ago. 4 minus 1, that's going to equal 3. And then 8 minus 3 is 5. So M, our slope, you can write uh, M. equals three-fifths. Okay, you can write m equals three-fifths, and again, it's already reduced, so it's not re you can't reduce it any more than three-fifths, and the there's no negative signs to make adjustments with, so we look at that and we say, oh, that must mean three up vertically, and then we're going to run to the right five, and that's going to make our line. Now, if it were reducible, we would reduce it, or if we had some sign adjustments, we'd probably want to do that. But for right now, we know our slope is m equals three-fifths, and that gives us a good start, a good foundation, a good beginning as to how to find the slope of a line given two points. All right, so uh, if you learned something, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe to be part of our elite team.